Welcome to another edition of In the Pocket. All thanks to the friendly team at Palmerbet and uh, Spine. I oh, know it might be all right up on the Gold Coast, oh. fella, but down here in uh, Southwest <laughs> Victoria, it is absolutely freezing at the moment. God, the yeah. weather changed, big fella. I'll, I'll tell you what. No, it's actually pretty cold here as well. Like I might have my T-shirt on, blue skies, but it's been chilly in the mornings. But I was just thinking about, uh, I was just thinking about that the days of running out in under nines and under tens and smashing the ice and the puddles and oh, we used to love it. Imagine doing it now. It's just like, oh, it makes you cringe. Mate, I could not think of anything worse than going to football training uh, on a cold winter oh. tonight. Uh, come at home, you're wet, you're muddy, you're just, yeah. Freezing. Can't ah, get warm. Nah. Nah. They and then they invent this stupid thing called an ice bath. It's like, hang on, just walk, nah. just do a lap of the oval. Mate, hot springs all the way for me, Spide. Uh, <laughs> hey, listen, we are getting down to the business end of the season now, Spide. So much to talk about uh, in regards yeah. to last week. Let's have a look at the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'm going to start with the ugly this week because your Saints were absolutely oh. shocking last week, mate. 32 point loss to the Crows. Um, only kicked uh, 39 points for the game, mate. You are just, uh, it just has not been a really good season. And and there's no kind of spark heading in for next year for mine either, buddy. Well, this is going to be the interesting thing, isn't it? Who are they going to keep now? There's a lot of clubs circling around some of their their key players. And, you know, unless the you know, Saints offer really big money, because they've got a lot of players that are out of contract as well. So they've got a tough time ahead of them, not only you know, towards the end of the year, but, you know, trying to get that list and keep that together. Then they've got the draft and then hopefully, um, you know, Rossi just, you know, I, I just don't think the old, you know, kicking 70 points is going to win your finals. You know, Sydney's done it a couple of times, but, you know, they're a different breed of football club. And, um, you know, I just think you've got to score to win. That's as easy as that. Defence, yeah, defence plays a bit of a role. And, you know, you, the hardest thing is you don't want clubs coming down to your level to play. You ought to be able to step up and play at other clubs' levels. And yep. at the moment, um, you know, you've seen over the last few weeks that clubs have really struggled to play against the Saints. Yes, but they're still winning. You know, the Saints aren't winning at that kind of game plan. So it will be interesting to see what they kind of look at doing over the uh, over the offseason. You know, King's going to be a massive, uh, you know, question mark at the moment. The, uh, no one's, you know, the, the, the sad reality is no one's really committing. No yeah. one's committing. Yeah, no that, one's saying absolutely I'm in. Yeah, that that's that's a real worrying thing. And and you know, kind of heavily draft uh a few years ago, didn't they? You know, like with uh, some some you know uh, players from other teams getting them yeah. in, thinking they're a lot closer, I suppose, to a a premiership window than they probably are. They need to, I reckon you're right, Spot, reincarnate themselves uh and become a more attacking team uh in twenty twenty five if they're gonna if they're gonna push well, something. Yeah. teams in the AFL. You know, who's on top? Sydney. Used to be defensive, but now they, they run. They kick goals. They yeah. really run, and they have multiple options up forward. Carlton, yeah, defensively very, very good, but they kick big scores. They've got a couple of really big. So even though they defensively really well, they still score, and I think you really have to score. Geelong, what's their main asset? Is their scoring power. Yeah. So they're the top three teams, and Brisbane. So the top four teams have all got key great full assets. And I just think, you know, that's where St Kilda's look at. Is King the answer? You know, are they able to get money for some of these players? Where are they actually at? Where do they see themselves at? Because, you know, the hardest thing when you look at it, Frio's one of the youngest teams in the competition and, and going really well. Port Adelaide's another pretty young team that's going well. Adelaide's probably underperformed a little bit this year. The Bombers have surprised most people this year, and the Giants aren't old at all either. So suddenly, and even Sydney aren't old. So, you know, how do you recreate yourself? You've got to try and find an, an avenue to win, and I don't think defensively um, playing that brand of footy is going to do it. Yeah, and you're right about King, mate. You know, like as a Richmond or something like that that's looking for a key four. They haven't had a lot of uh, output from Lynch the last couple of years, so they need a big target. They've got a lot of picks in this year's draft, so there might be a little bit of uh, attraction there. Um, you know, and the Saints go back to the draft and try and get some good young kids. Hey, what about the bad from last week, Spide? Uh, the Collingwood Football Club. We've kind of been sticking fat with them, to be honest. Uh, yep. 20 point loss to the Cats, who are up and about again. Um, where are they at? They're currently $3.50 to make the top eight. Uh, we wouldn't have been talking about this at the start no. of the season. And even early on well, in the season, we were thinking, how far are the pies? 
Well, I just don't think the blokes at Palmer Bet's got this right. I think, uh, you know, 50% of the population would be saying, this is a great thing that the Collingwood Footy Club is struggling. <laughs> That's not the bad. It's absolutely great. Yeah, it should be the good. <laughs> the good. The good is Collingwood's getting done. But, um, no, we always love to see, you know, the big teams playing well. But there's a couple of key factors here. I think, um, you know, injuries have cost them, no, no doubt, throughout the year. Uh, there's been a lot of speculation about their skipper, more and he has probably had a, a year that um you know wasn't nowhere near as good as last year and you know there's been question marks about him should have been taking the the number one forward which I think a lot of people probably agree with and and the last one is Dacos you know are they a one man band you shut down Dacos and they just can't seem to have any flow so it just goes to show how important you know Nick Dacos is Josh Dacos plays an absolute Great role, one of one of BNF last year, but you know you shut down Nick Dacos and you're shutting down a lot of their spark, a lot of their firepower, and a lot of their players haven't had the year from last year. You know, Jamie Elliott's really struggled to go; he's been in and out. So, you know, they've really, I think they've just, yeah. They, can you call it a premiership hangover? I think so. Ha- happens to a lot of sides, mate. Um, Bulldogs, yep. uh, similar big fella, uh, of course, a few years ago, 2007, uh, 2016. Um, so it yep. does happen, and it can happen to teams. What about the good, mate? Uh, the Hawks, nowhere see or come uh-huh. nowhere season, continues to absolutely fly. They're currently 13th on the ladder. Uh, a great win against the Dockers last week, 13 uh, 14 yep. point victory. Uh, one win outside the eight. They're currently three bucks to make the finals. Where do you see the Hawks, mate? And they play, you know, you come back to the Saints, mate. They play a good, exciting brand of footy. They do. And that's where that's where they win games. They if you give Hawthorne the first couple of goals, they will not they will not let up. They'll get their tails up and continue to run. So I think, you know, Hawthorne's running capacity, running forward, mixing it up, going forward. You know, they've got so many options. They've got players that can play forward and back. The only thing Haw- Haw- hurting the Hawks was the first five weeks when they lost the, you know, their games and their percentage is shot. So, you know, percentage is going to play such a massive role in six weeks when, you know, you come to the last round or the last two rounds. So that's why I put a line through them last week. But at the same time, you know, they continue to impress. But, you know, realistically, with their percentage, they're two games outside the eight. Well, I didn't want to mention the fact that uh, you put a line through them uh, last week, mate, because uh, you've turned their little fortunes around like you did to Fremantle earlier on in the year. Yeah, yeah. well, Fremantle should be paying me. I should be on the books at Fremantle. <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> we don't want to. We probably want to put a line through our tips last week, to be honest. Oh, terrible. Let's move three, on. Three out of nine for you, mate. Four out of nine for me. We have had a torrid kind of five or six weeks, to be honest. You We're have- back this week, though. We're back. We're back and we get to live and we get to fight another day. That's what it's all about. Uh, you lock in September, your spider's best bets last week. Port Adelaide, the only one that let you down there against your yeah. oh, son's spot. Um, Brisbane and the Giants both won. Uh, any which way, Cray Saints, don't even want to talk about it. Nah. Uh, North from four, uh, Bob Bomb. And at the line, Collingwood plus four and a half, Secure plus 13 and a half, and Port Adelaide plus eight and a half. Jeez. North from Nothing. Nah. No. Nah. The human duck oh, eggs, no. you know. Lucky their duck eggs and not chicken eggs. They're expensive now, chicken. So <laughs> we've we've actually got the bird flu, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> we got something going on, but we can bounce back, Spide. We are going to bounce back. Uh, one from four for me. Not even going to go there as well because I was all over the pies last week. Now, listen, you put a line through the Hawks last week. So Hawthorne, Adelaide, St Kilda, West Coast, North Melbourne, Richmond. Yeah. Uh, um, I nearly wanted to give you a little mulligan, but I thought, nah, stuff, yeah, you're not getting a mulligan. I was going to let you bring Hawthorne back in if you wanted to. No, no, I, I'm I'm pretty adamant that I don't think you're two games out. I'm going to find that too hard. Right, okay. So you stick yep, with the Hawks. So then, yep. then we've got Collingwood, Gold Coast, Western Bulldogs, Port Adelaide, the next four side spied. Yep. Any and any? I, yeah. Who? I'm going the pies. I don't reckon the pies oh. can make it. Right, oh, that's it. They got a tough yeah. run home, haven't they? They have got a tough run home, and you know, a same like you know, when you look at just Bulldogs run home. The Suns have got a pretty good run home. Suns have to win four of the six, you know, to make it. They, they're pretty good on percentage. Port Adelaide, I think they'll win enough games as well. So I just think Collingwood with their tougher run home, and they're not in great nick at the moment. They're not in good nick. So I reckon they could absolutely be out by the end of this weekend. Mm, very, very interesting spot. The old magpie army won't. Oh, be- I know. So, 
<laughs> They'll be after me. Hawthorne went caboose last week. You can turn them around. So if you're a Collingwood supporter, this could be a good thing. Um, <laughs> I'd put the, the red line through. But we're going to know a hell of a lot more uh, after this weekend's round of matches. That is for sure. Because uh, there are some cracking games. Uh, oh, and, you yeah. go through them all. And there's so many of them that are just sitting there nicely now that, that are just going to, like, as we say, there's, what, two games between 2nd and 13th. Never been like it was 27 years ago since they had something like this. I think it was in 97 when <laughs> we made the grand final against Adelaide. It was this tight. So I think, um, yeah, it's yeah, it's going to be – that's what footy is. You couldn't ask for a better structured competition right now. No, nah, could not agree more, mate. And uh, just on, just on uh, last week, you know, our little, um, you know, bets and, uh, you know, our, our stats and that that the palm a bit yep. like. Oh, I went through it all, Spite, um, uh, and just had a little bit of a, a little bit of a squeeze. Uh, and, uh, and I was really, really impressed, to be honest, with uh, how it all went last week. Eight of those suggested bets saluted yeah. last week, and there was probably about another five or six that were like borderline, if you know what I mean. So if you yeah. are an avid sports bet punter and uh, you like your AFL footy punting, you need to have a listen and have a look at some of these stats because uh, they are smack bang on the money, so to speak. Well, right now, most players and most teams are in a pretty good space. You know what I mean? They're running pretty consistent on what they produce. We know they've been set up for the last 16, 17 weeks, ready to go. So, you know, these stats don't lie. Like these are consistently over the whole year. So you, you, you're betting with a little bit of advantage because this is what's been pretty consistent. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, listen, let's get to this week's round of matches, Spot, because uh, as we said, some really interesting games. That Hawthorne Collingwood game, the Giants and the Suns games, they are going to be beauties. But it all starts Friday night at Marvel Stadium. Essendon taking on Adelaide. Uh, head to head, the market all thanks to Palmerbet. The Bombers dollar fifty two, Adelaide two fifty three. The line here is minus eleven and a half. Stats and bets we like the last three games yep. between the Bombers and Crows. The margin has been less than twenty points, so either yep. team to win by nineteen points or less is currently two dollars twenty. Jordan Ridley has had twenty five plus disposals in three of his last four games, um, so him to do that again is two dollars fifteen. And Lockie Scholl has kicked a goal in nine of his last 11 games. So Lockie Scholl, anytime goal score, $1.70. Uh, and Spide, I'm going to just throw this straight out there. You know, oh, here we go. Friday night footy. So yeah. I, find, I have multi that my Maddies must have early cab off the rack. <laughs> I've multi. Well, are, you, are you telling us now? I've, I've multi those three together, $8. Right? Okay. These, don't lie. So these stats don't lie, you're calling it, which is fantastic. It's, I love it. Lie. So either team under 20 points or under 19. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Be yep. Tight, into Jordan. Tight, That's great. Yep. So yeah. I'm just doing that. I'm going to show the, the Palmer Bet followers how easy and simple it can be when you've got stats like this in front of your spot. But who's going to win? Big game here for the Bombers. They need to bounce back. Uh, before I do, though, if that gets up on Friday night, Will you double up on Saturday on the next game? Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> you have to. You have to. Oh, look, Friday night footy uh, under the roof, I think. Um, look, going to be a cracking game. Again, you know, Bombers have got so much there to play for. I still think they've got a lot of, like, gee, I still think they've got a lot of growth in their fall line to achieve. I don't think they're playing at their best by any stretch of the imagination. So I, I'm going to stick with the Bombers. I reckon it'll be a great game. It'll be a hard one. I, I think you're right. It's going to be within that 20 points. It's going to be a close game. Um, you know, Adelaide still scare me with a, with a couple of big key forwards, but, um, you know, a couple of outs too for Adelaide, which will absolutely help. help. And, um, you know, when you look at, uh, you know, some of the Bombers midfield so far this year, they've just been really cleaning up. They've been, you know, really making a spark and really showing other clubs how to run. So for me, if Adelaide, Adela um, if Essendon can get their four line up and running, if big two meter Peter can kick a couple of goals or, uh, or a stringer, I'll be happy. I'm going to stick with the Bombers. 
Yeah, I'm sticking with the Bombers. Going to be a close game. You're right about their forward line, mate. Plenty of upside. Um, they haven't really fired the last few weeks, so I reckon they're due. Um, in saying that, the Crows are in a little bit of form at the moment. They might yeah. be havoc on the run home. Righto. Giants v. Gold Coast Suns. Saturday, 145 at NG Stadium. Head-to-head Giants at $1.38. They are short. Gold Coast, $3.05. The line here is minus 17 and a half. Uh, stats and bets that the Palmer Bet crew like. Giants have beaten the Suns by 28, 44, and 40 in their last three games. So the Giants there at the line yep. might than half a dollar ninety. Toby Green, uh, three plus goal, uh, three plus goals he has scored in each of those games. So he to kick three goals again, he's two dollars seventy. And the Giants' opponents have hit the total points, uh, over total points in the last four games. So Suns over 74 and a half points is a dollar eighty nine spied. Um yeah. this is a cracker. I must admit, I reckon the Suns, the Suns are a bit of value here at 305 for mine. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I look, I'm back in GWS, but at 305, I actually think they're overs. I thought it'd be a lot closer. I thought it was a 50-50 game. Um, and we know the, the Suns haven't won away from home. So, again, you know, you look at that, there's zero, zero and eight on the road. But, you know, they put a lot of emphasis on. We saw last time they lost on the road, Dimmer was absolute ballistic against uh, North Melbourne. They bounced back against Port Adelaide. And GWS have found a little bit of form as well. So, I think, you know, a bit of the experience of the Giants, Toby Green being one of those, Jesse Hogan as well, up forward. Um, I'm going to stick with the Giants. I don't reckon there'll be much in it. Uh, I just think uh, I, I, would have, I would have taken the Gold Coast at the line if it was a little bit more. If it was out to about 24, 26 yep. points. Um, so I'm going to stick. Yeah, I'm going to stay with the Giants. Oh, gee whiz. Oh, you know what? Oh, the Giants have hit a little bit of form the last couple of weeks, but gee whiz, Gold Coast had a few good plays out last week and responded, needed to. Uh, and yeah, I, but they've got a couple of now they've got a couple of suspensions as well. Yeah, I know, and that's probably hence the three hundred five. Right, I'm sticking with the Giants. Uh, don't don't let us influence you. No, uh, no, I'm sticking there, mate. Uh, I reckon they Dimmer will have the boys uh, Cherry Rod to win away and on the road. Um, that's the other uh, big question mark, and and to keep their finals hopes alive. Yeah, you know they need a big. Oh, start. absolutely. Well, both of them really need to, but more so the Suns. They lose this, they make it really hard for them. Then they're going to win four out of five. And don't even start me on those suspensions. Some of those. Uh, I, oh, don't you? Yeah. I, I spot. I don't know where the league's going at the moment. To be honest, nah, it's, uh, nah, it's, we we could sit here for hours and talk about that. They, they, you know what? They should they should run a book on the suspensions. Oh, <laughs> Are you allowed to do that? <laughs> like, like, even last week, Heaney, you know, like oh, to be not yeah. eligible to win a Brownlow for something like that, like that would happen a hundred times. Well, in- you know, one thing if he if he gets if he does end up winning it. The person will just get up and accept it on his behalf. Oh, my oath. I'd send it. I'd mail yeah. it, mate. Um, express yeah. post um, if I was doing it. Hey, listen, St Kilda yep. is playing for draft picks, let's be honest. Uh, Saturday, one forty-five at uh, Marvel Stadium, head-to-head Saints, dollar twenty-two. West Coast, four thirty. They were better last week. Uh, at the line, minus 25 and a half. St Kilda games uh, this year have gone under the total points three out of the last five times. That doesn't surprise. So total points under 164 and a half is currently a dollar 88. Jakey Waterman, he's in good, Nick. He's kicked two plus goals in four of his last five games. I reckon that is a lock. Yeah. To kick two plus a dollar 60. And Nasaya Wangadi Malera has had 28 disposals in three of his last four games. For him to do 30 plus this week is 235 spite. Uh, West Coast were better under Schofield. Of course, Simpson was moved on last week. Um, they can often do that. It's what they do the next week, I reckon, Spy, that tells a, a lot more about that playing game. Yeah. And I reckon, uh, I reckon they'll bounce back. Um, you know, I think you know, West Coast Rovers at $4.30. Yeah, they haven't had the greatest year, but gee, either is St Kilda. So mm-hmm. with players now being given a little bit more free license, you know, even though they still have to play in some form of structure, it just feels like the monkey's off their back, you know, new coach, it's going to be all new. They're pretty much doing a job application or a job resume every weekend. They go out there to see who stays on and how they build their list in um, a couple of months. So, oh, yeah, and I think West Coast has got a pretty, you know, they've got a powerful four line. St Kilda's defensive line is probably their strongest as well. So I think them two are going to be a really good battle. But, you know, I'm going to stick with the Saints just not by much, but um, I reckon, 
yeah, just at home makes it a little bit easier. But you know, the fourth four dollars thirty at West Coast, I think that's overs. I think the the Saints are still dollar twenty two. Nobody be back in the Saints at a dollar twenty two confidently. No, nah, no chance whatsoever, but they'll get the job done, I reckon, Spide, uh, and uh, and get the four points. Hey, Hawthorne Collingwood, match of the round for mine. Saturday, 4.35 at the MCG. Going to be a big crowd. Hawks have won five out of their last six. Pies have lost their last three. Head-to-head, the Hawks, $1.85. Collingwood, $1.95. Stats and bets we like. Three of the last four Pies games have gone over. The total points, the total points over this game is 168 and a half. That's $1.88. Um, Dylan Moore has kicked two plus goals in his last three games against the pod. So Dylan Moore to kick two plus this week is $1.82. And Steel Sidebottom has had 34 and 28 in his last couple of matches for the Pies. So for him to get 25 plus is $1.88. He's in good nick steel. Who are you tipping here, Spide? You've put yeah. a line through the Hawks and you've put a line through the Pies, mate. What are you doing? <laughs> I, don't, I don't care. They might as well go on their uh, their September holidays. So <laughs> it doesn't matter. But yeah, but um, yeah, it looks side bottoms being fantastic, but that's off the back of you know to go not getting much of it, and then you've got day cost being tagged. And you know, if Hawthorne can close down blokes, this is this is their game. They can close down day cost, they can close down, you know, you you, you small forwards, they're, they're just able to lock teams down and then create from them. I'm, I'm, getting, I'm sticking with the Hawks. I absolutely believe the Hawks can can win this and it will be, you know, as we know, it's going to be not great conditions. Hawthorne will be just pushing it forward. They'll have a real crack the pies, but I don't think you – know, you just got to look on the last couple of weeks, you know. One's winning form, one's losing form. I'm going to stick with winning form every day. Yeah, I, I reckon, I, I know you've put a line through them, but I reckon winner will play finals. So whoever wins will feature in September. Uh, so who wins? I'm going. Oh, who, who's, play, who's playing finals? Come on, you make the call, but who's playing finals? Collingwood. Oh, Collingwood will win. Okay. Right, eh? So I just I don't know. remember this moment in time throughout the year, Spide. Whoever wins this game will will play finals and they're both three dollars, three ten and three fifty to make the eight. So if you want yeah. to play that way too, maybe the way to go. Uh right, this is going to be a belt of two informed teams. Geelong v the Western Bulldogs Saturday, 7:30 at GMHBA Stadium. It'll be a sellout spot. The Cats, dollar forty two, Western Bulldogs two eighty eight. The line here is minus fifteen and a half. Stats and bets we like the last three games between the Cats and the Dogs have gone over the total points. So total points over in this game is 170 and a half. So a dollar 88. Jezza Cameron has kicked three plus goals in three of his last four games. He's in good nick for him to do that again. Two dollars 08. And Jamari Eagle Hagen has kicked two plus goals in six of his last seven games for him to do that again. Currently a dollar 99. He was sensational Eagle Hagen last week, as was Jeremy Cameron. Battle of the four lines and the midfield spine. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, look, I, I just think, you know, the Cats at home, Dangerfield brings so much to that team. Everybody walks, you know, taller and stronger with Dangerfield. Tommy Stewart's been well. You know, the Dogs were exceptional last week. A lot of people, you know, we've always – a lot of people sit there and draw the line through them and, you know, you know um, Bevo was under so much of the pump, but then they just come out. And as you say, Hugo Hagen or, you know, the Bont, whoever it is, they just step up and play a really good, exciting brand of footy. So it's going to be a cracking game, I reckon. But, you know, Geelong, I still find Geelong a little bit short at $1.42. I don't think they should be that short. I think it should be a little bit closer. The line, yeah, I'm going to stick with the Cats at home. That's the only reason. I just think them at home, always going to be hard to beat. And as you mentioned, they are in good nick. We can't take anything away from them. You know, they've been able to really turn their season around. Big question would, you know, do you, do you think Tommy Hawkins will will play a game by the end of the year? I actually doubt it. I think, um, you know, they're just in too good a nick. And, you know, finals, are, you just can't give up a spot these days for finals. Yeah. Do you know, I, I find this game intriguing to be, I, I don't reckon the Cats spied at going as good at home. It's not the fortress that it was a couple of years no. ago. Um, so I reckon the Bulldogs are going to go down here. Their pressure was enormous, uh, last week. And, and I reckon that's the difference when they play and they hunt the football and they, you know, their pressure acts are up. I reckon that's when they're at their best. And I reckon they'll bring the heat, uh, on Saturday night and might be a little bit slippery at GMHBA, a little bit of rain around spied. Uh, Yeah, but 
I just think they've been a little bit, yeah, we know what the dogs have been like over the last couple of weeks. They yeah. have been good, but at the same time, they're hot and cold, hot yeah. and cold. So, you know, they've, they've all the, that's the only thing with the dogs. Every one of them has to be on. So for me, I'm going to stick there. Yeah, I'm going to stick with the cats at home. I'm going Bulldogs, mate, 288, uh, head-to-head, happy to play that way and uh, just hope that they come and bring that heat like they have. Hey, Port Adelaide v. Richmond, Saturday, 7.30 at the Adelaide Oval, head-to-head, the power of nine. Richmond at 7.50 at the line here, it's uh, minus 40 and a half. Stats and bets we like. Tigers have conceded over 100 points in their last three games. So for the power to score over 103 and a half total points, that's at dollar eighty-six. And the Tigers have lost three of the last four games by 40-plus. So Port Adelaide at the line, minus 40 and a half. He's $1.90. Shade Bolton has six goals in his last two games. He's in good nick. So for him to kick two plus goals is $1.75. Power will get the job done. He's oh, yeah, I think they do. And, you know, unfortunately, the line for the uh, for the Tigers is looking like, a, you know, just a natural occurrence now. They just haven't got the manpower out there. They lose Taranto as well. So that's even a, a bigger loss for them through the middle. So, yeah, for me, I... I I just think, um, you know, Port Adelaide, they're getting the job done. Gee, $1.09, it's always short, but they'll kick over the 100 points as well. I don't mind that bet. So I'll be taking Port Adelaide over 100 points and they'll win by 40 plus. I'm with you. I'm following you in on that exact bet spot. Uh, that is a nice yeah. way to play. Uh, yeah, I just, the Tigers have been gallant throughout the year, but uh, they just haven't got the cattle at the moment. Nah, uh, it's tough for them. It's tough and they know. You know, it's six weeks to go. It's cold. It's miserable. You know the outcome. You can't do anything to pers- to persuade it. You are trying to, you know, you go out there to try your best, but at the same time, things can get a little bit too hard. Couldn't agree more, mate. Right, eh? let's talk about this game. Brisbane, oh. v. Sydney, Sunday, one ten at the Gabba. It is going to be huge. The Lions, $1.86. Sydney, $1.94. Look at the line. Minus nine and a half. <laughs> That's how tight it is. Wow. Not giving us anything at Palmer Bet. Uh, the Lions have won three straight against the Swans and the six straight uh, games at home. Um, so that is a big thing. So Brisbane to win here, just head to head, $1.86 to the play there from the Palmer Bet boys. Cam Rayner has kicked a goal in his last six games and two plus goals in his last three. So Cam Rayner, anytime goal scorer, $1.38 to kick two plus, $2.90. That is a big Yeah, that's a good value. And James Robottom has 20 plus disposals in four of his last five games. So for him to do that again, a dollar ninety-one. Um oh. this is a flip of the coin, isn't it? This could be, this could be spider grand final preview. Absolutely. And you know, it might be even worth you probably get better odds betting on the flip of the coin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah better off it. It's all tasks because it is, it's gonna be a what a great game. And um, we've seen how good. And Nick, both of these teams are in Sydney, probably coming off a you know a bit of a lull. But as you said at the top of the show, that you think them and Carl, they're always going to do that. You know, they're always going to have the – you're not going to be able to win 20, 22, 24 rounds into the finals each and every year. So, look, I find, yeah, fascinating. But I think the main stat out of all of that, thanks to, you know, the boys at Palm Bet putting it together, the Lions have won three straight against the Swans and six straight at home. That's Unreal, mate. That's that's a big stat for me. They do line up well. You know, they've just got so much five power up forward. I can't wait to see like you know, you got um, Eric Golden, you know, and then you've got Lockie Neal, you know, Zorko, and yeah. you know, just just the names that we we'll playing and who will be playing on each other and how they'll line up on each other. I reckon uh, will be great. And I reckon Brisbane's defence is probably just a fraction better than Sydney's forwards. Um, so I'm going to stick with the Lions at home. I'm going Sydney, mate. Uh, oh. Bounced back in a big way last week for mine. So Swannies to get the job done against the Lions. But as I said, this could be a grand final preview. Um, that is for sure. Fremantle, Melbourne. Wait, wait, three, wait. One, one thing I would like to see, because I'll tell you what, if Sydney go down at the Gabba up there, can Palmer bet how many phones would horse go through? Yeah. <laughs> the horse would be smashing phones. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I love it when he gives it that one. <laughs> here it is. I've got it here. Go, 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 go. Here, here, here. Rossi Law <laughs> gives me up. <laughs> oh, oh, the horse that. is one of the greats. Oh, he's a superstar, mate. Great coach. 
Yeah. Hey, Fremantle Melbourne, mate. Sunday, three twenty at Optus Stadium. Head to head, the Dockers dollar forty four. Melbourne at two dollars eighty. Spied uh, stats and bets. We like the Dockers have won nine of their last ten games at home against the Demons. So Fremantle to win a dollar forty four. Four of the last five Dockers games have gone over the total points. So over 154 and a half this week's $1.88. And Ed Langdon has had 20 plus disposals in three of his last four games. To do that again, he's $1.87. Spied thoughts? Oh, look, I reckon the Freo Ruckman are going to smash him up. We know Gorn isn't there anymore. So, yeah, I'm on the Freo bandwagon. Uh, they, they, I think at home they, they will be able to outrun. You know, Melbourne... Their defensive can look a little bit slow. And when you look at uh, Tracy and these guys for Fremantle, they're quick, they're fast. They'll match up May. They'll take him right up the ground. They'll bring him all the way back. So, yeah. And, you know, I know there's been a bit of hype around Fife, you know, saying he's only getting, you know, 12 or 13 touches, seven of those clearances and making sure they work for him. So he's still going to drag a great player and he can turn it on if he really needs to. So, yeah, I reckon Freo at home. <laughs> yeah. yeah, get Everett, get Everett off the bandwagon for Clive. <laughs> get, get him off the Fremantle bandwagon. <laughs> Come on, mate. You don't jump on the Dockers <laughs> now, mate. Hey. Fair dinkum. Uh, oh, I'll smack the Demons, and that's a good stat. Nine of their last ten games at home against the Demons. Get on them. They uh, they'll bounce back this week quickly. Spied last game. Carlton v yep. North Melbourne Sunday four forty Marvel Stadium. Head to head. The Blues dollar fifteen. Kangas at five fifty. The Lions minus thirty five and a half. Blues have hit the total over points in two of their last three games against North. Uh, so one hundred and seven point five at a dollar eighty seven. Patrick Cripps has had thirty five, thirty, and twenty eight. Wow. In his last three games against the Kangas, he's in good nick. Cripps 30 plus is two dollars twelve. He's in Brownlow middle form for mine. Cripps, yep. he'll back. Yeah, he'll back it up as well. And uh, Yarrick and Carlton, this would be a good multi if you wanted to get amongst it. With uh, I think big scores. I think Kerno needs to kick a big score. Harry, uh, Harry will kick a couple, and Cripps will have thirty plus. I don't think. Yeah, and I'll, I'll back him at the line. Carlton need a bounce back, and I reckon they will against North Melbourne. So do I, mate. Carlton, comfortably. I reckon the Kangs had a good couple of weeks, but come crashing back down to earth last week. Right, eh, Spide? Give us your pick. Oh, yeah. religion. Well, you know what? When I've looked at them all, I've picked taken every home team. Oh! Every home true. team. Well, you know what? Last week, they got six or seven out of eight or nine. So I think, um, you know, I'm going the Bombers, the Giants, the Saints, the Hawks, the Cats, Port Adelaide, Lions, Dockers, and Carlton. All the home teams. And that's going to return you 23-24. Love it, mate. So, but... well, I've only got two different different from you. Oh, yeah. um, so I've gone uh, Essendon, St Kilda, Giants, Collingwood, Port Adelaide, Bulldogs, Sydney, Fremantle, Carlton, 48-45. So yeah, yeah. Similar apart from a couple of, couple of roughies, mate. What else have you and, got for a spike? Well, my, my two multis, and I'd actually look at that last Carlton one we spoke about because I reckon that's a – Multi, yeah, great multi, but I didn't think of that earlier. I got two. I reckon the true home ground advantage this weekend. True yeah. home ground advantage. So all the all the teams playing at their true home ground. So I'm, the Giants, the Cats, Port Adelaide Lions, and Fremantle. And if you take all of them, they're playing at home. They're on their home deck, and that's going to give you five eighty seven. Love it, mate. Nice so, at the price there. I and love that one. The Palmer Bet. Yeah, I'm I'm going Friday night footy. I'm with you. I'm kicking off Friday night. I'm on the bandwagon and I've taken it. It's a pretty easy one. And it's called uh it's raining under the roof. It's raining under the roof at uh Will Marvel be. Stadium. And I'm taking the bombers Langford and Stringer to kick two each. And for the Crows, Fogarty and Big Tex to kick two plus each. And if those four all salute, you'd be getting nine dollars forty four. I'll love be kicking it, goals. Absolutely. I'll be kicking goals. So it's That's mine. Goals. I love it, mate. Well, I'm going back to that Friday night footy spide and the three stats and bets we like. I'm just combining them. So either team to win by 19 points or less, 220. Jordan Ridley to have 25 plus, 215. Lucky Shoal to kick a goal, $1.70. $8 for that one, mate. Great bet. Love it. And, and you Great should be following these stats. Download that Palmer Bet app. Get involved. And don't forget, get your mates together and get a punters club together too happening because that is really, really exciting. Spite, it has been a pleasure as always, mate. And I uh, look forward to catching up. We're going to know so much more after this round of football. Absolutely. Every week shows us something a little bit uh, more excited. So only six weeks to go after this week, five. But uh, as we should always say on the way out, 
Free, oh, way to go. <laughs> we are the free old doc. <laughs> Think, is this a bet you really want to place? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.